Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem B2 from 1989 Putnam math competition. So here is the problem. This is an abstract algebra problem that is asking us to see if a set is a group that satisfies these certain properties. The operation is associative. It has cancellation from the right, it has cancellation from the left, and powers of every element gives you a finite set. In other words, there's going to be a cycle when you look at powers of this element. So I started with the last condition. What does it mean that you have a cycle? It means if you look at a, a squared, a cubed, etc. At some point, there's going to be a repetition. So let's say 8 to the power of 15 is equal to 8 to the power of 27, something like that. But if that happens, because of the cancellation, you can write down this as a to the 14th times a, or I guess a star a, a to the 26th star a. And then because of the cancellation from the right, we're going to get a to the 14 is equal to a to the 26. And of course, you can repeat that, and eventually you're going to get a, uh, a equals a to the power of 13. So notice that the difference between these two exponents 15 and 27 remains the same as the difference between 14 and 26. So 15 plus 12 is give, gives you 27. 14 plus 12 also gives you 26, which is why you end up with a equals a to the 13, which means you have a equals a to the 12th star a. So this is a candidate for the identity of the group. Of course, this is not necessarily the identity at this point because it only satisfies A equals E, if I call this one E, star A for that particular um, element A. So if I look at something else, if I look at B, B may be equal to B, B to the 17. Uh, this gives you a different thing. This gives you B to the 16th times B. And this element may not be the same as this element. These two elements may be different elements. So what are we going to do with that? So what I thought was, let's see what characteristic this element has. And let's do that in general. And let's see what we can get. So in general, you're going to be able to find n and m that a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m, and n is less than m. Now, if you reduce n by 1, you get a to the power of n minus 1 star a is equal to a to the power of m minus 1 star a. If n is more than 1, you can do that, and that would tell you that a to the power of n minus 1 is equal to a to the power of m minus 1. And if you repeat this, you're eventually going to get a to the power of 1 is equal to a to the power of some integer plus 1, where k is a positive integer. Now, I was hoping that I can show that this a to the power of k is in fact uh, the identity of uh, this uh, set. And in fact, I was able to show that this a to the power of k is the identity. OK, so one property of this a to the power of k is that if I look at a to the power of k times a, I know that's a. If I look at a to the power of k times a squared, that would give me a squared. If I repeat that, a to the power of k times a to the power of k is a to the power of k. So that's a good property of this element. So that means if I call this one E, this satisfies E squared E equals E, which is, of course, a property of identity of every group. So now let's take an element B. So let's say B is in S. Since E squared is equal to E, I can say that B star E squared and sometimes I don't put this star, but I actually mean that these are just the, the operations. So if I don't put this star, it's just the same operation. This is the same as B star E. Now by cancellation from the right, we can say B star E is equal to B. In fact, this E is an identity from the right for every single element B in S, not necessarily just for that element A. Now, if you look at uh, E squared star B, that is going to be E star B. Now we can do cancellation from the left. That would give us E star B equals B. So because of this, and this happens for every B, this means E is the identity element. Okay, so this is the identity element in 
uh, S. So we were able to successfully show that S in fact has an identity element. Now I would like to show that in fact it also has uh, the every element has an inverse. So let's take an element B in S by what we showed above we can find some positive integer let's say M such that B is equal to b to the power of m plus 1. So we showed that. Now on the left we have b. So we can write this one down as b star e and on the right I can write it down as b to the m star b or rather um, b star b to the m. Now I can use cancellation from the left so I'm going to cancel this. That would give me e equals b to the power of m. And this is exactly b star b to the m minus 1. And it's also b to the m minus 1 star b. This is only if m is more than 1. So what does that mean? It means b and b to the m minus 1 are inverses. If m is equal to 1, then e is equal to b. And we know that e squared is e. Um, so that means b squared is also e, which means b is the inverse of itself. So let's see what we showed so far. What we showed so far was we knew it star was associative. We showed that it has an identity. We showed that it has every element has an inverse. Therefore, it would be a group. And that brings me to the end of this solution. So if you like this video, make sure you check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I have a lot of videos like this walking you through the solutions of problems or going over some topics that show up in math competitions. So I will see you in the next video.